Hi, my name is Dave Johansson, and I'm one of the co-owners of Blossom Hill Crafts Pottery School in Los Gatos, California. Uh, today I'm going to be demonstrating uh, making a small bottle, a three-pound bottle. I've got some examples back here of some bottles uh, that I've made. Um, before the first of the year, this was our project of the month. I think it was uh, in maybe December. It was the project of the month, and I never got to the video, so that's what this is. So I've got uh, three pounds of clay here, and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just get it centered. And you know, there's nothing special about uh, centering the clay for a bottle. You just uh, center it up, and so there we go. I've got my clay uh, nice and centered. And uh, once the clay is centered, um, then the next thing to do, just like any uh, any vessel that you're going to make is to drill the hole so I'm gonna do that now now when I trim a bottle I don't put a traditional foot on it in fact I trim the bottle right side up so I'm actually gonna leave the bottom of the pot pretty thin less than a quarter of an inch because I don't intend to actually trim the bottom so I'm gonna just poke down there and see and uh, I don't have I'm less than less than a quarter of an inch I don't know if you could see that um, but uh, so I've, I've got a Pretty thin bottom, not so thin that I can't get it off the wheel, uh, but pretty thin. And now I'm going to open the hole, and uh, so I'm doing that, and uh, I've opened the hole about that wide. Now my bottle is going to have a narrower foot than that, but I'm going to narrow it as I throw it. I want it wide enough now so my hand fits in comfortably, so that I, I'm not doing, you know, sort of gymnastics with my hands in order to get my hand inside the pot when I'm trying to lift it up nice and tall. So I want to make sure that I compress the bottom of the pot. I'm always doing that. Always compress the bottom. And uh, I'm going to compress the rim, making sure that rim is really in nice shape. Now I have uh, one of the things about throwing a bottle. I think of sort of what I would call the the traditional forms that every potter should know how to throw, the bottle is one of the most difficult. And part of that is you have to get the, the, till, the cylinder tall. No short, no short cylinders with bottles. Um, so right now my clay is about that thick. And that's a little bit thick to start pulling on. So I'm going to use a little trick to thin that out and even it out. I don't, I don't consider it a pull. A little water on there. And what I'm going to do is put my right hand on the side of the pot. So it's like, uh, that's my left hand on the side of the pot, but since the camera's on the right side, you can't really see. But my right hand is just on the side of the pot like that. And with my left hand, I'm going to push, I'm going to be on the inside of the pot. I'm going to push to my left hand and just lift up. It's not a pull. I, I'm just trying to even the clay out. Just like that. You can see my cylinder got a little bit taller. Do it again. And now I've kind of, I'm, I'm, much more even from top to bottom and I may be that thick. So now I, I've actually got like, you know, clay that I, I can work with and start to throw a nice tall cylinder. So I'm going to do my first pull and when I, when I pull the clay up this time, I want to make sure that the clay is going up and in. I don't want it going up and out. So uh, what does that mean? That means that I have to make sure that at the bottom of the pot I have a flat, a flat floor to an angle. I don't want a rounded bottom. I want a flat floor to an angle. And I want uh, the, the top, on the inside of the pot, I want the top a little bit narrower than the bottom. There we go. So I'm just perfect now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a groove at the bottom of the pot. And what that groove does is allow me to get under the clay so I can lift it. Now, if you're going to lift tall cylinders, it's my opinion that you kind of got to lose the sponge. So, um, my left hand is just going to go like this, down right here. My right thumb is going to go <clears throat> into that groove like this. So, it's, my knuckle is in there. And I'm just going to lift the clay up. And notice how I'm getting it to go straight up. Just like that. And there we go. I've got the beginnings of my cylinder. and a little funny clay in there. Um, now, I'm going to set the rim of this pot right now. And I like to do that uh, when I'm uh, 
throwing bottles or tall cylinders and I'm going to do what's called a scissors lift. So I'm going to get the outside of the clay a little bit wet and I'm just going to put the clay in my left hand. Just cup the clay in my left hand. In my right hand I'm going to put my knuckles over the top of the pot and between my the clay is between my two knuckles. I'm just going to squeeze them together and pull up. Just boom. So I'm supporting with my right hand and pulling up with my left hand. I mean supporting with my left hand and pulling up with my right hand. There we go. And compress the rim. I've now set my rim. And uh, that it gives me a few advantages. I'm not going to pull all the way to the top now. I'm only going to pull maybe to right there as I do my next pull. All right. So again, I'm going to make a groove at the bottom. And each time I make that groove, I'm actually pushing the clay in a little bit and narrowing the bottom. So I just kind of push it in. And I'm going to do my next pull up. and kind of stopping right in there. My rim is already set right where I want it. I'm going to just make sure I keep that rim nice and level. So there we go. I've got a nice tall cylinder. It does not really matter how many pulls it takes you to get to this height. Okay? I did it in two pulls. If it takes you four or five, that's okay. Um, my next pull I'm going to do and I'm going to shape the pot at the same time. So I'm going to lift the clay up and I'm going to shape the pot at the very same time. Okay? Um, and that's really, really important. If you think about the particles of clay are kind of stacked on top of each other like this, right? And um, if I just uh, shape the pot, let's say I push on this side, what happens is I go, I end up making the clay particles kind of go like this. They separate. But if I pull the clay up and shape it, I can kind of keep them moving together and I have a stronger shape. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but believe me, it, it really helps. So I want to create a little belly like this and bring the clay back in. So I'm just going to kind of pull it up and shape it and bring it back in. Um, and I'm just going to be, you know, uh, uh, gentle about it, but... Uh, you know, get it to go there. So I'm going to bring the clay up. And you see how I'm pulling it up a little bit? And shaping it. And there we go. I'm bringing it back in. And kind of letting it out. And my belly is way down here. I don't actually want it down there. So I'm going to just narrow this off a little bit. I'm going to come in here and bring my belly up just a little bit. There we go. So now I've kind of got my belly in my pot. I raised it up a little bit. And now I'm going to start to collar in. So to collar, <clears throat> I want to get water on the outside of the pot only. So I'm going to put my hand on the outside of the pot like that and I'm going to squeeze the sponge to my hand and just draw some water down the side of that pot. And it actually kind of takes a, sort of a full hand collar. So I'm going to go like this and speed the wheel up and just collar the clay in. Now what I want to watch is right in here. If in my collaring I have the clay come up and then it makes a sharp angle, the clay will drop and I won't end I, and I'll end up with a bad shape. I can sharpen the angle in here later, but now I want to keep this at a nice moving angle because it's very strong. So now I'm going to go to a kind of a more traditional collaring posture. This finger is turned in so that the clay is touching here, here, and here on both sides. So I'm going to speed the wheel up and I'm going to push in and I'm going to go up. I'm going to push in and I'm going to go up. Okay? So you'll notice that my top is starting to get a little uneven and that's because nothing is perfect. And uh, you know, that's one of the things you got to get used to in pottery is you could get it close but it's moving a wet clay. And what's happening is I'm bringing this top up as it's recentering itself, and that's what's causing that. 
And for right now, I'm just going to leave it. Okay, we'll fix that in just a minute. But for now, I'm going to just leave it. So I've just, I've got myself a nice start on a bottle shape here. But notice there's no sharp turn in here. No sharp turn. So I'm now going to make a groove right here, just like I did at the bottom. It's the same kind of a groove, and I'm going to lift the clay from here. So a little bit of water, not much, just a little bit. And up with the clay. And there we go. And now I'm going to go back to collaring just a little bit. Whenever I collar, I have to speed up the wheel. Okay, notice now that I'm bringing my fingers pretty close together, right? Okay, it's maybe getting a little bit out of shape down here. I can just kind of come and kind of just put it back to the way that I want it. All right. Gathering a little bit more clay, bringing it up. Well, I could still get my finger inside. I'm going to give it a pull. Maybe gather it in a little bit more. And there we go. We've kind of got ourselves the nice beginning of a bottle. And the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a little bit off the top. And this is how I finish off the top of a bottle. Um, I get my, uh, my left hand is down there. It's below the top. And rather than doing it like this with my needle tool, I'm going to come this way with my needle tool. Of course, because I'm doing a video, I'm struggling a little bit. And I'm just going to take that off of there like that. And you can see that that is how I finish the top of a bottle. I'm going to put my finger down there and give myself just a little bit more height. Just, I'm just continuing to collar and lift and hold from the bottom and compress and there we go I now have a nice bottle form and if I want to I can just take a little bit of clay off the bottom to make my trimming easier which I definitely tend to do with bottles because I'm going to trim it right side up on the wheel. So there's that. And voila. Um, that's a three pound bottle. I'm Dave Johansson. This is Blossom Hill Crafts and I really encourage you to give it a try. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to write them down in the comment section and I'll do my very best to answer them. Thanks a lot. Bye now.